Want to try your first water effects? Well, so did I. This is my results. Let's find out how I got there. Nick speaking, and welcome to this video. Right, a tutorial for you today, a sort of how to, how not to uh, do water effects, in particular green, acidy, toxin type water effects. Uh, so I've never done water effects before, um, which is why I've recorded me actually doing the whole process in this video. Because I know there are some great uh, water effect tutorials out there, and watching an expert do it, um, they always make it look really easy, don't they? So I thought it'd be really interesting if you were uh, just about to do your water effects to watch someone do their first ever water effects, uh, see how they get on, um, and maybe learn from from it. So that's what this video is about. Now uh, to get all the information that I got on doing water effects, um, I went to uh, Luke's APS. That's uh, Luke's Affordable Paint Service. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, it's uh, doing really, really well, and rightly so, because it's got some awesome, awesome content. Uh, really, really nice guy, great tutorials, um, and uh, he's been really helping me out, not just with his videos, but also on Facebook, um, with some private messaging that I've done with him. And uh, Luke, thank you so much for all your help. So, uh, there's a link to Luke's channel in the description below. I'll also link up a couple of his Water Effects videos. Uh, in those videos you will find links to where you can purchase this, which is what I'm using in this tutorial. So that's the CFS Clearcast Resin, uh, it comes with the catalyst as well. The only thing I would say about this is buying a small tub like this, uh, it costs the same to buy the tub as it does the postage to get it to you. So just bear that in mind, probably worth buying a bigger tub, especially if we're going to do a lot of water effects. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's have a look at me doing the water effects. Okay, so here we are. Um, I just set up and prepared everything that I need easy at hand. Uh, I've also opened the windows and the doors uh, that are leading to this room because this stuff is going to be quite smelly. Um, right, so. The first thing to do is we've got our jug, this has got uh, the measurements on, and I'm going to plan on using, I think, a pint, uh, because, uh, to be honest with you, I think there's a, I, I don't know how much resin I'm going to need, um, I might make up a little bit less, I'm not really sure at this stage, and as, as I said, I'm sort of winging this a little bit, um, just because I've got absolutely no experience in it, um, but that is one reason why I am... Uh, making this video just so you can see me my process thought process um, and maybe learn from it um, So yeah, right so put on some gloves just to obviously protect my hand So let's first of all get this resin open ah, right, There we go Okay So yeah, that does whiff. It's not a bad smell though Okay, so let's pour in some resin. I'm going to sort of judge, imagine I'm pouring it into the piece of terrain, see how much I think I'm going to need. All right, here we go. It's quite thick stuff. Don't know that I'm going to need as much as maybe I thought, so I'm going to look at going maybe. Oh wow. I'm going to go half a pint, I think. All right. Right, there you go, half a pint. Right, I'm just going to leave that there for now because I might need some more. Okay, now I'm going to quickly weigh that. Right, that's 250 grams. Um, and you need to put 3% of this catalyst in there. Um, so, 100 grams is 3 grams. Um, oh, 250 grams, here we go, it says it on the side. So that's 7.5 grams now I'm not quite sure how I weigh this to be honest with you but what I do know is this pot has 25 grams in so half of that is 12 and a half so about there <laughs> I'm gonna wing it basically so I know how much is in there um, so I'm looking to put seven and a half grams uh, just over a third 
Um, I would say, I'm just measuring it out with my finger. Right, oh yes. Now before I do that, I forgot, quite important actually, let this settle for a couple of minutes because there's air bubbles in it. Uh, so while that's doing, I'm going to have a chat about the other stuff that I've got. So I've got myself two paints. Um, I'm just using old paints that I don't use in my um, paint pot. So I'm using Mute Green, an old Citadel one, and I'm using Flash Gits Yellow. They're going to be the two colours I'm using. I've got a wooden spoon just to help me mix it up, etc. I've got a old pot. I'm going to pour some test resin in there so I can see how it's drying, etc. And then I have three Chinese takeaway tubs. Now I wish I had more, but I've only got three at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the piece of terrain on the tubs so that it's raised off the table. So if there's any leakage at all, I can physically look underneath. I can see if there's any leakage. Uh, so that's the idea behind that. Uh, right, okay, so hopefully that's uh, just settled down now. So let's get some of this um, catalyst in. Right, so a third is about there, so just going to pour some in. It's not particularly scientific because I don't really have the measuring. I'm going to have a tiny bit more. Right, there you go, that will do me. Right, and now we've got to spend two or three minutes, or at least a couple of minutes, mixing this up. And we're going to try and mix in the catalyst and also make sure there's no air bubbles in there. So I'm going to mix this up. Now whilst this is mixing, I am going to add some of this green paint. Not quite sure how much, so it's a few blobs I suppose to start with. Let's see what that does. Okay, the resin is turning green. Now, to be honest with you, I don't know exactly how green I want this resin. Um, I want it see-through still, because I want you to be able to see the details on the bottom of the terrain. But, um, I'm not sure quite how green I want it. It's pretty green, I think I'll go for a bit more. So, let's just add a bit more paint. Seems like you don't need much paint to change the colour, it's only a few drops I've put in. Right, there was one other thing which I also got myself, I just grab it, so I forgot to put it on the table. And that is this, which is a syringe. I'm going to use this for the, applying some of the yellow, so that I can be a bit more accurate with it. I'm just going to keep mixing this. I think I've got them quite a nice colour. Seems like the pigment of the paint is still like a bit bitty. Don't know if that's normal or not. Just keep mixing it. See if that goes away. And to be fair, it doesn't really matter if it is a bit bitty anyway because it's going to be um, a material that we've never even seen on Earth. Um, it's going to be gauze fluid, so it can be look like anything. Okay, well I've given that a good mixture, so I'm just going to say that's done. I'm just going to put the spoon in my tester pot. I'm going to move the tray now over this side and get ready for pouring. Okay, so the train is on those uh, little tubs and I'm ready for pouring. Now one thing I did make sure that I got when I got this jug was that I had this lip to make it easy for pouring uh, just on the front of the jug. So, the moment of truth here. Um, yeah, let's start pouring it in. And as I said, I don't know if I've mixed up enough. If not, I will add some more. Because, I think to be fair, it's quite a thick area that I've got to try and pour it into and I'm going to try and pour it over the pipes area as well because I want the effect to look like it's coming out of the pipes. Okay it seems to be going in. Definitely haven't mixed up enough. That's okay I can just mix up some more. OK, 
Okay, so that's not enough, so I'm going to mix up some more. Right, so I've mixed up some more, it looks pretty much the same colour, and I'm going to start pouring it into these bottom little cave things here. Just making sure I don't get on it anything but inside the little cave. Ooh, a bit too much there maybe, that's okay. Just about right actually. Right, let's put some more in here. Now the top section, I will be adding a second layer of resin. So I'm gonna do some sort of special effects. But the bottom section, I'm not gonna be doing that. So I'm just filling these up to, whoop, got a drip there, oh dear, oh well. I don't know whether I'll be able to get that drip off, so let's try. A bit of tissue, and let's see if it comes off. I might just have to repaint over the top of that, just to take the shininess off. Okay, that's all right. Right, so I'm gonna put a tiny bit more in this one. And the rest I'm going to use in my little testing pot so that I can see how hard it's going. So I'm going to put a similar thickness as in what I've already got there. And now just with the final section I'm just going to add this here. Like so. Right. Have a quick look underneath, make sure it's not leaking out everywhere. There appears to be no leaks that I can see. Right, now I'm going to add some little bit of special effects. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to use the green that I used in the original um, mix. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to add a few drops of that around this area where the explosion is going to be if I can get it out get a good shake Ugh. right okay another one, just another drop right there you go and I'm just going to get the spoon I'm just going to mix that up I want it to be like this area here is where the liquid had originally come from something like that just to thicken it up a bit and now I'm going to get my dropper and I'm going to add some yellow to that so I'm going to add a bit more green I think I want a bit more green So just a bit more. I've noticed I've got like a little speck of something in that. I'll try and get that out. I don't know what that is. It's like when you've got an eggshell in there. <laughs> right, and I'm just going to spread this out a bit more, I think. I think it'll have a bit more of an explosion, a bit more of an impact than maybe I've got on there so far. So let's just spread that out. And when this sets, this is going to look pretty cool, hopefully. There you go, that's better. Right. Now I am going to get my syringe, and I'm going to put some yellow on it. Now I don't know how this is going to dry. At the moment, the, the Blood Angel's head and everything that's in there seems pretty hidden. It may dry a bit more see-through, or maybe I just put too much. Um, too much green in the mix, I don't know, but anyway, right, I'm going to just add a few drops of this now.
Okay. Now apparently, that yellow which I just put in will dissolve into the mixture a bit more. Um, but having said that, I think I'm going to mix it up a little. So I've just got a little stick here, I think I'm just going to... Because the tutorial that I watched was like, um, uh, like toxic waste coming out of a barrel. And I don't know that I want that that look. I just want it to look more like an explosion of this like stuff. So I think I will mix it up a little. There you go. Right. I think that I'm done enough to leave it. Uh, so I'm going to leave that now to dry. Once it's fully dry, assuming that it does dry, <laughs> I'm going to add some little um, like bubbles on here and then repaint it. I'm going to paint the bubbles this like yellowy colour. And then I'm going to add some more resin on the top. Give me a second layer of resin. Right, so more to come. Right, I'm back. It's about half an hour since the last clip um, and the good news is it's not leaking underneath. The bad news is um, I was a bit of an idiot. <laughs> so what happened was um, I was looking at this section down the bottom here and I noticed that half of it had this like funny sheen to it. It looked, when I looked at it, I thought, what's going on? Maybe it's just not mixed properly. Um, so I decided to mix it with a stick, and I just sort of went and I mixed it up a bit. Um, I think in reality, what was happening was it was drying. Um, and in me mixing it, I sort of messed up the drying process. So I've now got this like, line going down here, a bit in this one as well, um, and I'm not happy with it. So I've rushed into the garden, I've grabbed a handful of stones, I primed them black and I painted them into my uh, Necron uh, colours and I'm going to turn the disaster into a positive and I'm going to add some rocks to this pool section here. I think it would A, give it a bit more detail and B, it's going to cover up my little mistake. So word of warning, once you pour the resin, don't touch it. Right, now I've tested the little stone and in this test piece it doesn't it basically floats it doesn't seem to go down which is fine because I mean this resin stuff I mean it could literally be any material couldn't it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the dodgy mistake area that I've had and I'm going to push in a stone like that there we go and hopefully it will just look like a stone sort of floating in this stuff so just give it a bit more detail and if you look at rivers and stuff they've always got stones and stuff them haven't they so right, let's put one here now i want to bear in mind that models will still want to stand on this so i'm going to try and make the rocks placements in an area well, I think the model's going to still be able to stand. I think it's pretty cool actually, I think it gives a bit more depth uh, to this, so I'm happy with it. Let's just uh, put some more over here, I think. Now, in the top section, I'm probably going to leave that with no rocks. So, the idea will be that as the liquid's gone down through the caves, it sort of dragged rocks and the rocks have sort of ended up beached up um, in the little pool area. I think that would be the story. Okay, just going to see if there is any areas that potentially might need a few more rocks. Looking pretty good. Okay, I've got a few left over. I think what I'm going to do is put them on the edges of this section because no, it probably would be 
just dipping out a few rocks and I'm just going to do them on the edges bearing in mind that I am going to be adding more um, effects to this so it should just be pretty cool just on the edges here just to add just a little bit more depth and detail Got two more left I'm going to add Trying to think of the men standing on there. So one stand there. Probably have another one here to make it easier for that man to stand on. There we go. I think I'm going to do that. The last one actually. That last one's not painted very well, so I'll leave that out. Right. Okay. So that's it. So now I'm definitely going to leave it uh, to dry. Okay, so it's a good few hours later, um, it's about five hours later um, and it's starting to dry and become see-through. Um, I've been touching the tester pot um, and it's come out, it's quite tacky um, and leaves fingerprints, um, but it's dry enough to do the second layer. Now, I've been in contact with Luke from APS um, and I had a chat with him, really, really nice guy, um, it's really, really helpful. Um, and it seems that I've been using the wrong paint for the yellow effects that I was going for. Now in his video, he does actually state it in his video, but it was a while since I watched it, um, but he, you're supposed to use Vallejo uh, Fluo paint, I believe it's called, it's almost like a wash, um, and it dissolves quite easily. The paint I use, obviously the Games Workshop one, wasn't, and in it, I didn't even water it down. Um, so it hasn't dis dissipated. Still looks cool, I'm still happy with it. Um, I was hoping it wouldn't be so yellow because I don't really want yellow on there. Um, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because this stuff here, who, who's to say what it's gonna look like? Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do the next step and I'm going to add some of these. Uh, so these are some little bead things that I got from a pound shop. Uh, so let's get these open. Well, these are little self adhesive things, so they're like little little stickers. And I'm just going to add a few little bubbles to the piece. And I'm going to try to make sure that I don't uh, get my fingers on there because it will leave a fingerprint if I do. So, okay, well, that popped off. I've got a bubble over there. Oh well. <laughs> right, let's try that again. That's better. And these are in various sizes. So what I'm going to do is just continue to stick these on. Okay, I think that'll do. Don't want too many, just a few. Um, and now I'm going to paint them using this uh, mute green. Gonna pause the camera once I've painted these. I'll uh, be back. Okay, so I'm back, and um, I've now realised I didn't have my video lights on in the last clip, uh, but still, hopefully, it came out okay. Uh, sadly, there's no going back now. I've put them on there and uh, painted them. So yeah, I painted them that green colour. They're looking pretty cool, actually. I quite like how they're they're looking. I think actually the green sort of contrast is that yellow that I've already got down quite nicely. So. You know, I'm, st I'm still happy with what's going on. Right, um, I've made up some more resin. This is actually the last, this is all the resin that I've got now. So there's, this has got to uh, got to make do. Uh, let me just give that one stir. Right, and now I'm gonna pour that in over here. So. Can pull it over the pipes as well. Really happy how uh, you can't really see it on the camera, but in the pipes here, it's really, really cool. I've got like these big drips coming down. I might have to pick the train up in a second and just move it around just to spread this stuff out. 
not really sure at the moment. Let's put some here. Now the bubbles are going to be a bit submerged, but I think that's okay. She can hopefully add to the effect. Well, the bubbles are actually totally submerged, but that's okay. Right, so I've decided to use the green as opposed to yellow on this one. Um, and this time I've watered down the paint a little bit. So I've got my syringe, just going to grab some of this. And I'm going to just drop this on, just around where those bubble things are. Yeah, it's not particularly... That didn't really work very well. Oh, I thought I'd watered that down enough, but not enough. So I'm going to go put some more water in. Right, let's try this again. Aha, here we go, it's better. Can mix that up a little and then I'll try see what it's like. Right. Just like the first time, I'm just gonna spread it around a little. I think probably if I was doing this again, I would have put more resin in the top um, on the first instance and left a shallower layer. Then those those bubbles would have been protruding a little. Now what I'm actually trying to do is cover up the majority of the yellow if I can, so that the yellow is uh, very marginal underneath. Hopefully I haven't ruined what I had. <laughs> it's difficult to tell. But hopefully that will be fine. So I don't think I'm going to touch that anymore now. It's just... He says as he mixes it up, just found a massive big blob of paint. So just going to... Spread this out, I think. Right, stop. <laughs> uh, right, okay, so I've got rid of a lot of that yellowy look, which I think I'm a bit happier with. I want to be fair, none of my neck and terrain has yellow on, so. Um, I think I'm pleased to have dumbed down that yellow. Right, I'm going to leave that now for a few hours and then uh, we'll have another look at it. Okay, so it's um, it's just after, literally, I just vid videoed that last clip um, and I thought what I would do is just give you a closer look so you can see it just as it is now, just when the resin has just literally been poured in. And um, my thoughts are that I'm slightly disappointed that the bubbles are totally submerged because that wasn't my vision. Um, having said that, it actually looks like some sort of explosion has happened um, and you know there's a residue of some description there that's just probably coming from out of the ground somewhere. Um, really like how this bike is looking, submerged in it and uh, just quickly look at the pipes there, hopefully that's uh, coming up. Let's try and get it to focus in. Okay, so uh, what you just saw was a couple of pictures of a little disaster that I had. Um, for some reason the edges of this section here were starting to raise up. Uh, Again, I contacted Luke. He said he's never seen that before, never happened to him before, never even heard of it before. 
which is slightly odd. Um, we think it probably was just the fact that for some reason the resin just wasn't adhering to the, the uh, material. Uh, now it did in all the other places, but I uh, did have two issues with basically this place here and this place here where the scarab is. Now, fortunately, I had a stone there which I placed earlier. Um, and what I was able to do was put some super glue underneath and just push down on that stone and I pushed it down into position, just held it so the glue dried. And I did exactly the same with the scarab where it had raised. Now at the time, um, this was about probably about 12 hours after I'd finished uh, doing the, the um, resin. Uh, and then I left it. Um, it's now four days later. The resin is dry. It's looking really good. I'm really happy with it. Um, on the other side, let's turn this round. There is a little bit of extra raising that happened over this side, um, which uh, happened obviously over the last few days. Now, to be fair, I don't know that I would have done a great deal with it, really, to be fair, because it's it's minimal. Um, I mean, arguably, I could go in now and put some sand or something in just to fill in the gap. But honestly, I just don't think it's worth it. I mean, this is an alien material anyway, so who's not to say that it would have that effect, you know, when it hits an edge or something. So, yeah. Um, overall, though, very, very happy with it. I think it looks really, really cool. Um, it hasn't come out quite as see-through as I was hoping, so you can't really see too much of what's going on underneath there uh, with the Space Marine head and stuff that I had on there. But on the whole, uh, I'm happy with it, and I think the effect looks really good. I'm very, very happy that um, I've done it. And now I can say that I have done it. Um, and uh, whether I use it again in the future, I may do. But um, yeah, it definitely looks really, really cool. So really happy with it. Right, okay, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you for watching, of course, as always. Please comment, like, subscribe and share. Don't forget to hit that bell button next to the subscribe button so you can keep up with the wonders of Warhammer 40k. Thanks for watching.